To start with, we need to define what isobaric technology is and what it isn't. What it isn't is just having two drivers uh, firing into the same air cavity. Uh, even if you take one of the drivers and use the back side of it uh, in kind of a push-pull configuration, just to get more volume, just to get more energy. So let's talk about what isobaric configuration actually is. By its design, you have a front driver and a rear driver. Even though there are a few configurations of the isobaric setup that you could use, uh, we opted to go with uh, a setup that's called cone to magnet. In the large PA world, uh, isobaric technology is used to actually save space uh, and to increase power handling. But for our application, we used it more for the sonic qualities that we gained. What makes our implementation of these two low frequency drivers true isobaric is the sealed chamber that couples the magnet to the cone between the two drivers. The job of the rear driver is to add mass, it's to add strength, a doubling of the motor structure, and what you end up with is a system that doesn't give you more volume. So since the isobaric technology doesn't actually give us more volume, what benefits does it give us? The benefits of using the isobaric uh, setup in our application is actually better damping. It also lowers distortion. We also get twice the power handling because there are two coils and two motor structures. And as a cherry on top, it actually extends the frequency response of the system, uh, giving us a deeper and richer bass. When you go with an isobaric setup, you actually uh, run in, into a slight challenge with sensitivity, especially if you have them, the two drivers wired in series like we went with. And so because we lost sensitivity, in order to gain it back, we actually custom designed our very own nine millimeter uh, dynamic driver that uses the strongest magnet available, the N54, in order for us to get the sensitivity of this ISO group, of this system, to where uh, we needed to. After we solved our sensitivity uh, problem by using the stronger magnets, we then used a low pass filter in the form of a mesh that was originally developed for the Forte Blanc to further shape the sound of this ISO group. As you can imagine, uh, taking another low frequency driver and implementing it or trying to fit it into the already crammed Neo shell was quite a challenge. And so we actually had to move a lot of things around and redesign the manifold and some of the components that surround the drivers to really use up every square millimeter of the space available. And furthermore, we adjusted and carved out some more space in the actual housing itself to be able to fit the system. It's an achievement all in its own of how to fit all this amazing technology without growing the shell and making it bigger.